This video looks at Nottingham, the homes of North Dublin, starting at the Santry River, working our way by donkey and cart with travellers to Rahini. We also come later to Colester and then move into Rahini from that direction again. Now, the videos are all uh, were all taken in the 1950s and 60s by people from uh, from Rahini Village and St Anne's Estate in Rahini. We'll sign out with the St Anne's Reel, and we're just giving commentary today on it. The travellers are still travelling, but many people have settled in North Dublin, and the ordinary people. Uh, who settle and use the facilities of Santry Post Office, Mina Bani Cribben, a very famous woman there uh, who has now passed on. People who, who used her services and availed of her charity were put in all kinds of houses, clearing the slums and housing the biggest slums was a big issue. When the British Legion set up Little Britain in Colester in the 1920s, here beside Colester train station. That was a big boon for the Cumming Ale government, which had already kick-started Merino, that we will come to in another video. There wasn't any money to spare. The ex-soldiers had a huge unemployment rate compared to their uh, comrades in Britain. Through networks in Clontarf and elsewhere. We can see their houses there in Middle Third that they built themselves. They were taught how to build them. They set up a hop on hop off omnibus service that became the 54 bus and gradually they helped to build a community. One of the big attractions of this estate was it had running water which is going to be a theme we will see when we move out to uh, to uh, Rahini. So life was hard these grim faced little girls uh, probably orphans and slowly through the various groups that were there in the 1920s with their elected representatives, uh, very colourful representatives it has to be said, were able to build up a community. The, the other importance of Colester is it's the first, if you like, working class estate beyond Fairview where, where Harry Boland hid the Russian crown jewels. And with Marino it was the beginning of this extension northwards, this working class extension uh, which continues to this very day so all these chappies in their medals the war was over but another war was beginning to um, lay foundations for a community now St Bridget's Church in Colester on the Holt Road in Colester was the Catholic Church responding to this wave of building and moving out of the slums which continues to this day um, one of the things with building a church cluster church in this case was it's it's a sign that you've arrived and it's it's an aspiration to um, socially climb in other words you you build the church you build the school you put in a few amenities and gradually a community settles and it's very very much settled now in Colester and here's the foundation stone going in which as you can see from the crowd was a very very big deal at the time the Archbishop uh, making sure everything's going to work out hunky dory there uh, huge crowds something to do and a sign that with the Little Britain in Colester, uh, these people were going to make a go out of it, and they've certainly made a go out of it. That's a hundred years ago, and uh, Colester and Middle Third, for that matter, is a very sought after thing. So they say a prayer, everything's going to work out well, 
and then uh, they all have a have a good time i'm sure the travelers were around selling trinkets and fi fixing pots and pans uh, many travelers were in the british army uh, their various skill set was very useful in that anyway a very big day in Colester was had and it wasn't to be the last big day at all because that was only the foundation stone the church and the community still had to be built there and as we will see if we go forward a couple of years here they came back with a relic of St Bridget the, the famous uh, saint from Kildare uh, who gave uh, St Kevin the hard time and voila here's a relic from the great St Bridget herself going into that church of St Bridget in Colester and uh, this is again the 1920s and a very big day is being had by one and all now I'd like you to look at the uh, Catholic Boy Scouts there in their uh, finery uh, you will see they're playing a variety of instruments. So, what that indicates is, it, already in Colester, they were forming a community, so much so that they could afford this church with a bit of help from the central diocese. Look at the, look at the chap playing the bassoon. Now, uh, so those young kids were learning musical instruments, uh, something that continues to this day, but, but not in the same organisational format. They certainly put their best foot forward on the day, and it was really a sign that uh, with schools and all of that, this place was going to go forward, and the nuns and various other groups were putting them in place. Here we have Monsignor Fitzpatrick, uh, in Rahini Church, uh, setting up that huge church that's in Rahini, uh, which was, was a good move in the 1960s, but it's probably uh, too big uh, for congregations and for maintenance uh, today. The nuns there smiling, and an interesting thing about Monsignor Fitzpatrick, we, we'll see him a few times as we go through this video, uh, he founded St. Vincent's GAA Club. There's George Colley, the former uh, government minister, and Monsignor Fitzpatrick also founded uh, the Rahini Shamrocks that's mentioned in dispatches later on. The Boy Scouts there all spick and span. Uh, the Irish Army marching in for uh, what was really a big day. Then uh, through the Rahini Catholic Church, through Father Ryan, a Tipperary man who was the first uh, parish priest, he came up and started Rahini GAA Club, which, as you can see, uh, started from very humble be uh, beginnings on what's known as Father Ryan's Field. That's the, uh, if you come down from the Rahini United Field, soccer field, it's, it's the second field across. So that was Father Ryan's field, and that's where the GAA uh, started, with that fellow with the strange-looking hat. And the Rahini GAA, of course, have gone on to greater things. Many of them, like Alan Larkin, have won All-Ireland medals. So uh, they built this community on the edge of St Anne's Park, named after St Anne's Well, the Holy Well of St Anne's. And... Uh, Kids then used to do physical stuff like run, r rob orchards, play football, uh, whatever. They didn't have so many iPhones in that day. Go down there to what's known as the Blue Lagoon at the end of Watermill Lane and uh, dig up bait uh, for uh, fishing or just act the maggot. Here we have Rahini Cottages in the middle of... Um, Rahini Village opposite the Catholic Church and the old St. Asim's Church, uh, the oldest part of Rahini, uh, built by uh, some big shot 200 years ago. I believe they're still paying rent that goes into Springdale uh, School, which is just around the corner from it. They're, they're very picturesque and at least in those days the locals were very friendly 
let you, they, they'd let the crows in to um, film their house. The crows uh, were long-term people from uh, Rahini. They uh, had the forge down the village. Um, the Capuchin priest there, the, the, the markers were the Manhattan Bar, you'd get off the 31 bus at the Manhattan Bar and then hoof it up to the Capuchin Monastery if you were going that way. So uh, you can see the kids um, uh, were happy with a lollipop between them. Uh, they were certainly more in shape than many kids are today. The famous Manhattan Bar that's gone through several transformations, as has uh, Rahini. The kids there had dogs hanging out their ears uh, too, but health and safety were on the menu. There's Monsignor Fitzpatrick's uh, grave. He's buried at, uh, in, at, at the front of Rahini Catholic Church, at that huge church there, uh, one of his many uh, testimonies. So through these people then a community of sorts uh, was built up and the um, end result is the Rahini we see today which continues to bloom and is a major attraction in its own right. Pat Duffy many Choke a riot on the north side dart where everybody goes. It was full of talky snobs and there was nobody I know. But the train kept on going. I was there, I was screaming. Get away from me, it's a bunch of Harvey Nicks. Harman's town and the next stop is ours now. We're here. In Rahini oh, And there is so much that we can do This place is great In Rahini Oh my god, look at him It's where oh, all the men look so don't cute be Don't be petrified In Dublin size It's just full of rice Let's Go for a walk down To the big bull wall oh, it's massive by the sea We can eat ice cream I stick my snake into your cone <laughs> See the ducks Oh, oh in St. Dan's Park It's so delightful. delightful I wouldn't go near this park after dark Play some golf And try get my Whoa. hole in one We're here yes. In Rahini I love this place And there is so much that we can do Come on in Rahini I'm looking at my oh, so many men that I'd like to do Hi, yes. Big up to you all in the shy rock athletics You have bunches. fabulous legs Hi to Kathleen and Ashcroft Hi, yes. Your pebble dash is only massive And hi to all the lads in St. Paul's College And all the girls in Matter Heights The news are messing right Oh here's me chorus Here we go In Rahini Hear me get you big curly whirly gobshite oh. Rewind in Rahini. Oh, there is so much that you can do. Wait, watchers on a Thursday. In Rahini. Go to the Green Dolphin and have a few. On Shelly, are you right? We go to the Rouen for a quick tie, if you know what I mean. <laughs> right, we're out of here. Here's 29A. Let's get this. We see the nuns there making their way to the Manor House School, which again was one of these huge uh, achievements. It wasn't easy for them walking up that little lane, uh, Watermill Lane, that's that's now a, a major highway between Rahini Village and uh, the Causeway. Back in the day, it was a little Bofreen that led down to what's known as the Blue Lagoon, which is the whole side of, of the causeway now. You had all these big houses. So originally, the, the whole area was uh, the centre of the Pale, and uh, the big houses farmed it. Uh, 
because of all the small rivers flowing through and they fed Dublin and much beyond Dublin from these buildings and from the farms around them. The park here is St Anne's Park which is a huge park but was the home of the Guinnesses which are connected with uh, the uh, St John the Evangelist Church in Coolock and also uh, the church on the Holt Road. Here's their huge spread, uh, the mansion which is where they lived in St Anne's Park where Queen Victoria and uh, George III that gave away America came to visit. The two of them were in there and uh, it went up in smoke in, the war, in World War II uh, because of whatever and the kids used to uh, play around in the ruins, many happy days, uh, no health and safety, climbing up that and going through the follies. These follies in um, St Anne's Park are mock buildings like the casino in Marino. It was a fetish if you had an awful lot of money like the Guinnesses had uh, or Lord Charlemont, you put up these imitation buildings and impress the horsey set and um, people are still getting value out of them today even if, even if it's only climbing up and down them and acting the monkey as these kids are doing with that folly. There's Monsignor Fitzpatrick again starting one of the Rahini Shamrocks races back in the day and it has to be said that the Rahini Shamrocks, uh, from again these humble uh, humble beginnings, are one of the major athletics things in the whole country. And some of their meets, like their five kilometer ra uh, race, as this one is, is one of the major athletic gigs in the whole country. So back in the day, uh, watching the Rahini Shamrocks was a big deal and uh, they'd come from near and far etc to engage in that and the uh, people the Noonans and O'Leary's who started that have obviously um, inspired others down the years uh, the likes of the Hoopers are quite well known and uh, you know kids would see this and obviously copy it and hope that they would wear would would win a big trophy one day. Here's a few kids running in Rahini Village. Have have a look at the hobnail boots on the the bloke there, second over to the right. So uh, not exactly Nika or whatever, but at that time uh, kids could play there. That that was the rockery down in Rahini Village, of opposite the dispensary and the cross there to Elizabeth Hayes. Uh, that we will come to again and again when we talk about Rahini, which has modernised now. Uh, it even has uh, drive-in banks and all kinds of technology. But um, all good things, you know, the old order, change it, give it way to the new. So uh, all high-tech there, no more hiding the money under the bed for the Bowsies to rob and break your head and uh, the likes of the Rahini Inn is still there how they're managing under Covid who knows but uh, at least back in the day they knew how to pull a pint uh, there's views there from the old graveyard which is um, in the centre of Rahini and was the old Anglican church which has now moved down the road a little bit to the uh, All Saints Church to where, where Bono uh, was married and uh, the Guinnesses uh, had a lot to do with it. Now back to the water, uh, water was, was a big deal and one of the big selling points of Calester was that they had potable water uh, which meant that the water pipes skipped the, the whole of the slums and went out to uh, uh, Calester. Uh, it was only uh, really after World War II that it, that uh, Rahini would have got potable water. For most people, uh, times were hard. There's Crow's forgery, uh, forgery where where he 
fix up horses and stuff like that. The Crows were long term uh, residents and it was a big attraction going in looking at the blacksmith uh, doing his things with the horses and um, obviously with the Guinnesses and people like that around there was a good bit of uh, business and then um, the um, when when the old aristocracy left we got our new aristocracy so uh, the horse business continued it still flourishes and um, however with the introduction of newfangled things like motorbikes and cars there's there's less demand for cars to uh, transfer for for horses to transport people around so uh, the blacksmiths have moved on to other things fixing cars and god knows what uh, the old attractions of, 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 of the the heat of the furnace and the smoke and the bellews and so on uh, is kind of uh, gone with the wind and Nivega Lehaid Aon Arish, but we will have to uh, make do without it. Now, if we continue to watch this uh, video, now the people in Rahini village or Rahini village, as the old timers call it, were very well behaved, but uh, other people, especially out in Port Marnock and Baldoyle, used to make. Uh, pikes and stuff like that in the forgery and use them to stick them into uh, people they didn't like and um, it was a good trade uh, even even if it was illegal here in Rahini village one of the problems was the RIC barracks was just across the road from the forgery and um, the Royal Irish Constabulary would have had uh, reservations about p people in Rahini making pikes like this fella did in case they got any ideas of where to stick them. There's the RIC barracks that became the Garda barracks uh, and there's now some bloke from Zimbabwe makes award winning bread there so the Garda had to get on their bicycles and they moved around the corner where they have a huge Garda station there uh, and Rahini village tranquil Rahini village is now uh, a major thoroughfare the girls from the manor house carrying on the tradition uh, of earlier generations from when the nuns set up the convent which was a former house of the Jemison family the Jemison whiskey family owned huge houses really all over North Dublin, Sutton, Baldoyle, Port Marnock and indeed here in Raheny. So we're still down in the village uh, in more tranquil times when people would talk, uh, when the rockery with the thing of Elizabeth Hayes was in the village. Elizabeth Hayes was a uh, an evangelical minister she, she was the daughter of Cecil Hayes the um, vicar of Rahini she died out in on the missions in India and the good people of India sent money for the uh, people of Rahini to have clean potable water and to erect a cross to her memory there's a, a, a hospital ward to her memory in India but her, her cross is one of the uh, landmarks of Rahini and the people of Rahini got very very good value out of the water pump and uh, as you can see um, it was a good way for them to bring fresh clean water in back in the day that was before uh, they used to go into the supermarkets and buy the stuff in bottles or rob it from bottles or whatever um, this is pre-selfie days so the kids tend to tend to be sullen faced and wonder why people are sticking cameras in in their face the um, pace of life was a bit slower but perhaps better here in Rahini village lots of those houses have turned into little businesses uh, selling takeaway food for uh, people to munch away in their houses um, 
the 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 art of 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 cooking like the art of uh, blacksmithing seems to be gone and the mansion is gone in St Anne's too there it is in its final day in the 1960s been pulled down uh, for health and safety reasons and um, there's now a big mound on it and uh, what the corporation intend to do with it God knows but back in the day St Anne's Park was a pretty wild place in, in, in that uh, it wasn't all that highly developed so the mansion is gone uh, the rockery down the village is gone. Elizabeth Hayes' statue has moved here and there. Anywhere there's a spot of land, they put up houses or a golf course. Uh, and um, the place just develops for good and for bad. And a little bit more concrete in here, in there. There goes the rockery. The... Um, sewage put in there and water pipes the um demand for uh, increased water and sewage has been huge as the place has expanded out towards holt and port marnock and malahide and uh, getting water from the dublin mountains and getting rid of the sewage remains a problem to this day so all these little vignettes uh, from the past are no more.